Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar, The Key to Social Selling is Social, Not Selling. Um, today with me is Devin Widgesinger and Carlos Gill. Uh, I will be the moderator today. My name is Gina Mueller. Um, and before I kick things over to Devin and Carlos, I just want to walk you through um, how GoToWebinar works. So you notice on the right-hand side of your screen is your control panel. Um, everyone will be on mute for the webinar, so if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, just go to the lower right-hand corner of your control panel and click on the questions tab, and you can go ahead and um, write your questions there, and I will either answer in the chat window or Devin and Carlos will answer at the end of the webinar. Um, we're also playing with the polls tab today, so we will have two different polls happening during today's webinar. Um, so I please encourage you to participate in those polls. Um, and also, today's webinar, we will be using the hashtag social selling on Twitter, so I encourage you all to um, tweet. And we will also, another hashtag we will be featuring is hashtag LinkedIn selling. Um, and in a moment, you will see Carlos and Devin's uh, Twitter handles if you want to interact with them in any way. So without further ado, I will pass things off to Devin to do the introduction. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for taking some time out today. I think this is a, a, a really fun subject that is being talked about constantly, um, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where everybody's talking about it, but almost nobody is actually doing. Uh, so one of the very best social sellers that I've ever run into is, uh, is on with me today, and he's a good friend, Carlos Gill, and uh, he has an incredible story just about how social has actually helped define his life and, and got him to where he's at, uh, and a, a real key to that was not selling. Um, we'll talk about, hey, what things you do, um, and then how you actually can connect that into ROI, but um, my background is uh, the CEO here of Insight Pool. It's a super fast-growing uh, social media startup that uh, works inside of social selling as well as social marketing. So I'll turn it over now to Carlos to give his introduction and uh, then we'll go ahead and get started. East Coast. <laughs> good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast and uh, good morning for those of you here uh, on the West. My name is Carlos Gill. Thank you so much to Devin and the team at Insight Pool for having me on today. I am uh, relatively new to LinkedIn. Um, as an employee, I am uh, not new to LinkedIn. Uh, like Devin had said before, I have um, a pretty unique and interesting journey as to how I, I came to work here at LinkedIn. Um, and I don't want to really bore you guys with all that because I know that you want to hear about social selling, but LinkedIn and social selling has made just a profound impact on me as a professional um, without even labeling myself as a sales professional. My background actually is in finance and in brand marketing. And when I found myself out of work at the beginning of this year, I turned to social media and I really turned to the relationships that I had built through LinkedIn over the last seven years um, to really help me get to my next role. And ironically, I was uh, in San Francisco uh, back in February interviewing for a job with a completely different company and I happened to meet a recruiter for LinkedIn on an Uber cab ride, if you can believe that. And it was by meeting this recruiter and by engaging on LinkedIn and by staying in touch that the stars really aligned and it helped lead me to, to the role I occupy now at LinkedIn, which is a senior um, manager of global social media for our sales solutions business unit. And uh, you know, I'm really excited just to share with you, all, uh, with all of you today, the impact that social selling can make, whether you are a marketer, whether you're a sales professional, and really how LinkedIn can help you bridge the gap between who you're looking to do business with and with the products that you have to offer. So again, big thank you to Devin and the team at Insight Pool for having me on today. Cool. Thanks, Carlos. And I think we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, launch a quick poll uh, that everybody will see. And it's just going to ask everyone, uh, do you use social selling today? So uh, we'll go ahead and have the poll get started, and then we'll go ahead and move on. Cool. So I think one of the big reasons that people 
are consistently talking about this subject is the simple fact that everybody knows that uh, the old school ways don't work anymore. People don't pick up their phone if you cold call them. Um, even in cold emails, uh, the response on them, everything has gotten so automated that people hardly ever respond to those anymore. And then the reality is, is that one of the most untapped mediums that so much connections and so much activity is, is happening is on social. And the reality is, is that people are looking at different aspects before they are even willing to have a discussion with anybody. So who you're connected to and, and uh, the subjects around discussions and then where it actually goes from there is a, is a huge journey. It's not all interconnected, but the reality of it is, is that people don't want to talk to somebody until they're actually ready to take an action. And then getting somebody to take an action is a lot of work that you need to do on the front end. So I think it makes sense and behooves us to just understand that the world has already changed. It's not that this is coming, because I think we hear about that a lot. Like, it's, the, it's already here. It's simply that um, the marketplace and everyone as salespeople or as people in general haven't necessarily caught up to what they need to do from an education perspective in order to actually take advantage of this. So another interesting stat is simply this. Like, it all goes down to the simple point of even if you leave a voicemail, uh, nobody actually picks it up. Again, so much research is done way, way, way before somebody actually decides to engage. And then what's really interesting is if you look at these staggering statistics relative to like buyers don't pick up their phone and buyers are doing a lot of research prior to ever engaging, um, organizations are still doing it the exact same way. Uh, and it's really interesting, and I, I think two-thirds is, is probably even low, um, almost no companies that you can talk to on a daily basis have an actual social media strategy for sales. What we find is there's some really good social sellers out there that are doing things ad hoc and on their own and outperforming their peers, but the reality is, is that it's not a consistent and single effort. And so obviously what Insight Pool and you know uh, partners like uh, LinkedIn, Sally Solutions, and so forth are doing is really trying to bring to bear um, a really cadenced, educated process because the reality is, is almost nobody has any. So if you look at this same statistic goes along with the same one. Um, that's why I thought two-thirds was kind of low, but the reality is, is that reps don't have any training. So what's funny is when people show up and throw up is what I call it. Like literally, people see, oh my gosh, I can identify Carlos. Oh, he matches my target customer criteria. Oh my gosh, let me bombard him with messages on social saying, hey, Carlos, you look like you'd like to buy my product. Click here. And it's really interesting because obviously that doesn't work if that person was sitting right across from you. And social media is simply the, a, just a genre of human connection. So if that person was sitting right across from you, would you actually do that? No, obviously not. So inside of not just the technologies being available, but also the approach that people have to consider and take so that they don't just go with immediate gratification. The reality is, is if you're in sales, that's what you're trying to get done. Um, but just like in sales, you have to do multiple other steps in order to get somebody to be interested in even discussing it with you. So this is just a definition that HubSpot gave which is a, a fairly lengthy one, and I won't read it all to you. And then let's take a look at the next definition that, for instance, SAP gave, a fairly simplistic version of that. But the point is, is that there is no single definition for what social selling actually means. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, is how do you actually try and connect the dots? Because, you know, as a, as a social company, many things that – you know, you can struggle with is saying, hey, how, how is this actually proof? We all know the activities there. We all know people are, are engaging and um, they're having discussions or they're going to groups or they're tweeting about subjects, whatever it is. But how am I able to actually take advantage of that and, and put that into practice? And just as an example, one of the things that we do is inside of our selling platform, we're able to tag different leads inside of our Salesforce system and then also tag it to marketing automation so that if we see people are engaging in the subject and then take an activity like go to the landing page, 
tracing all of that back to social and then putting that even in our Salesforce or CRM system. And this is how we use it ourselves and, and say, hey, how much faster did that deal close? Because if people were talking about something on social and we engage them, um, you know, did that create more urgency? Did the fact that um, because I'm connected to Carlos or I'm connected to somebody else that's having a discussion, does that actually look like a referral? And so the, it's a proven fact that people that feel like they're referred move a lot faster through the sales cycle and through the funnel. And that's just one of the you know, key elements that we actually do to, to try and track this ourselves to prove value. And so this is a quick story I'll, I'll say and then we'll turn it over to Carlos, but I use it, I use social selling myself all the time. I, I'm always trying to connect with um, people that work at our data providers like Twitter, uh, and this is a particular example of somebody that worked there and then went on to be a, a, a partner at Redpoint Ventures. So I've, I've kind of isolated my target and then what I did was is ran an analysis on him to figure out some of the interests that he might have. And one of the interests that that person had was uh, Golden State Warriors basketball, and I happen to be a big Atlanta Hawks fan, and they were playing each other. So it's interesting because I saw a conversation that happened between um, Golden State, and I engaged it and then just tagged the person in there. And what you'll see is just the amount of conversation that happened, and what you have to remember about this is people will go like, well, how's that scalable? Like, I mean, you know, how can you sit there and really do that? And why you're only talking to one person? Well, the reality is on social, and the beautiful part about this is that this was all public. So I could measure all the people that were engaging with me because of the conversation I was having. And in this particular case, what we did was have a conversation about uh, the basketball game, but then we made a little wager. And um, you'll see that it continued to go and continued to go. And... It was a, a really fun discussion, and I've never met Jeremy before. And in the reality, what we said is, let's meet up for this and, and close this in person. And you'll find, if you look at this, that we sealed it with a, with a handshake in person. But if you look below, all the people that are engaging in that, all those people below there are all exact target prospects of mine that I wanted to engage and that I was able to because I had a sincere and authentic conversation with Jeremy. And so, you know, you can dig into this a little bit later and see, you know, exactly what I did and how we did it. But that's another big key element to social is being truly sincere. Uh, not, again, showing up and throwing up. I didn't hit Jeremy up and say, hey, uh, I want a meeting with you. It would have never worked and never would have happened. And the reality is there's an incredible waterfall effect that happened because of this because of all those other people you see engaging. So I want to turn it over to Carlos now. And Carlos obviously lives in this world day in and day out and would love to be able to have him kind of share those same stories and the same statistics that he's also working on. Thank you so much, Devin. That is an awesome example of how just using social media and being sociable can go ahead and connect you with, with people and, you know, I think what you guys are going to walk away with after today's webinar is going to be just that. It's selling by being sociable and leveraging social media as a platform. And I want to segue into um, LinkedIn Sales Solutions. So the business unit that I represent is LinkedIn Sales Solutions. And our mission is very simple. It's to connect the world's buyers and sellers to build relationships. Now, on the next slide, I have, you want to switch to the next slide? So the definition of social selling. In social selling, it's, it's loosely defined. Um, you saw some examples before from HubSpot, from SAP. We have a definition at LinkedIn on what is social selling, and it is leveraging your professional brand to fill your pipeline with the right people, insights and relationships. And throughout this presentation, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how we go ahead and do such through uh, what we call the four pillars of social selling. Now, um, from a statistical standpoint, what the IDC let us know based on the data that we have access to here at LinkedIn is that 75% of B2B buyers 
use social media to make purchasing decisions. Next slide, please. Now, 84% of C-level and VP-level buyers, they use social media for B2B purchasing decisions as well. So for those of you out there that work in sales and feel, you know, perhaps I should cold call and not use social media because the C-levels and the VPs are not using it, um, yeah, again, data and research lets us know otherwise. 95% of B2B decision makers expect new or different insights from sales professionals. And what does this mean? They want to be engaged. They want when you approach them and reach out to them, whether it's through LinkedIn, which I'm going to go through that here in a minute, or if it's through another avenue, that you're not going to be knocking them over the head with the same sales pitch that they're used to getting. They really want actionable insights. They want to be engaged. And here is perhaps the most fascinating stat of all. Uh, five times more likely to engage with sales professionals via warm introduction than cold outreach. So what's that mean? If you are leveraging social selling, if you're leveraging LinkedIn and the resources out there that are available, decision makers are five times more likely to engage with you. Next slide, please. Now, to go ahead and put it into context, folks, Social media is similar to a cocktail party. There's a lot of side conversations in between the noise. So the slide that you're seeing right now, it's a cocktail party. And the way I like to kind of make this analogy come to life is those conversations that you see taking place, those are the tweets, those are the DMs, those are the LinkedIn in-mail messages, those are the status updates. Think of social media as not only a cocktail party, but it's a big ocean. And there's many small ponds, which are the social networks. Now, historically, business deals, they were done on the golf course, right? So you go out, you play a round of golf, you have a good time, you shake hands, and that's where business was done. Today, in the rapidly moving world that we're in, LinkedIn is really becoming that bridge between sales professionals and prospective buyers. Now, compared with other B2B buyers, buyers who use social media for purchasing, they spend 84% more per purchase. Next slide, please. And social buyers also make 61% more purchases on average than buyers who don't use social. And this is based on an IDC white paper uh, that was published last year. Now, again, I said before, um, sales professionals who engage through social selling, using social media, and specifically LinkedIn, to be viewed as a thought leader in, the, in their industry, to use LinkedIn to be introduced by someone in their professional network, and also leverage LinkedIn to uh, develop insights on who they're trying to sell for, they're five times more likely to actually engage with a decision maker than through cold outreach. So what's this tell us? Sales professionals can partner more effectively with social buyers by increasing their social proximity, their presence, and their capital. And let's kind of break this down. Social proximity is your network. Um, it's your size of network, right? It's your reach. Your social presence is slightly defined as differently as being your professional brand, your identity, your authenticity. And then your social capital is the insights that you have access to through social media. Now, a big misconception that sales professionals and even marketers have today is how to leverage each social network throughout the sales process. So what you have in front of you is a breakdown of personal networks and professional networks. So let's kind of take a, a minute to look at this. So personal networks, that's more of your Facebook, your Instagram. These are networks that are used to socialize. They're used to stay in touch. They're used to be entertained and, and very much so also kill time. Um, sharing content. Your professional networks, this is your LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn is your professional brand. This is where you're going to maintain your professional identity. This is where you're going to make useful contacts. This is where you're going to search for opportunities, whether it's job opportunities, potential sales opportunities. This is where you're staying in touch, either with prospects or with former coworkers. And this is also where you're going to invest time and keep up to date for your career.
So this slide right here, um, it just really kind of breaks down the importance of using LinkedIn, again, the professional social network, to be focused on the right people and companies. So think of LinkedIn as your prospecting tool where you have access to go ahead and make contact and connect with prospective decision makers and buyers at companies that you want to do business with. Also, LinkedIn is a resource for you to stay informed on key updates at your target account. It's also a platform for you to go ahead and build trust and loyalty with prospects and customers. And a key stat here is buyers have 22, if you want to go back uh, one slide, please. All right, so buyers have 22 times more favorable impression if sales professionals are introduced versus if they're reached out to cold. So again, value of using a professional social network such as LinkedIn, um, all about identifying who you want to do business with, stay informed on their business, and then build trust and loyalty through dialogue. Next, please. So what makes social sellers more successful? Okay, so let's really get into why social selling is important for you. Well, we already talked about the value of using a professional social network such as LinkedIn as opposed to using a personal social network. With LinkedIn, we have what's called Sales Navigator, which is our platform that allows sales professionals to run targeted searches. They can also go ahead and leverage their, their professional social profile. So when they run these targeted searches, they have the insights and news on their prospects that they can lead in with a warm introduction, uh, which makes the world a difference. Because I can tell you as someone that's worked in brand marketing for several years now, the worst thing that you can possibly receive from a sales professional is what I call a, a cold message. It's the opposite of a warm introduction. It's when someone just goes ahead and sends you a LinkedIn email message, it has no context, they haven't done their research, they haven't tried to build dialogue, and they just essentially spam not only myself but members at my company to with the same message over and over, hoping that by the time they reach the third or fourth person, they're going to get the time of day to go ahead and meet with them. And later on in this presentation, I'm going to show you guys some real life examples of times in, in recent times, in fact, when sales professionals have reached out to me with a cold message without any context. So let's go ahead and spend some time talking about the four pillars of LinkedIn social selling. The first is create a professional brand which is establishing a professional presence on LinkedIn with a complete profile. Next is finding the right people. This is prospecting efficiently with powerful search and research capabilities that LinkedIn offers you. The next is engaging with insights, which is discovering and sharing valuable information to initiate or maintain a relationship. And then perhaps the most important of the entire sales cycle when using LinkedIn or when social selling in general is building strong relationships. Customers, buyers, they want to be engaged, they don't want to be sold to. So what LinkedIn offers you is the ability to go ahead and expand your network to reach prospects and those who can introduce your prospects and doing it in a way in which you're adding value and you're not coming across as just another sales professional. So let's take some time to talk about creating a professional brand. And for me, I can tell you, I can attest, this has been the game changer for me as a professional. This is what really helped me get the job at LinkedIn, and this is what has helped me stand out. But at the same time, this is the piece that I've also encouraged professionals over the last seven years to take the time in investing in. Your professional brand, think of your professional brand as a 401k account. Think of this as a social media piggy bank. The more that you invest in your professional brand, the more the opportunities are going to open up because what it's going to do is it's going to really position you as a credible thought leader, as a credible subject matter expert. And it starts with, very important, having a complete LinkedIn profile. And what does this mean? This means having a professional headshot, having a short summary at the top of your profile, completing all the sections of your profile on down from your summary, which describes who you are. This means having the right tone, which is, um, what is your story? What do you really want people to learn about you? And it's also having rich media content within your profile, which again, 
leverages your professional experience to really position you in the best light as an expert. And I want to go ahead and challenge um, those of you out there listening to do this, whether now or whether after this webinar, go on Google and type in your name and see what comes up. I can almost guarantee you that your LinkedIn profile is probably going to be the first, second, or third item that comes up in search results. When someone is looking to do business with you, just like when you look to do business with someone, your instinct is to Google them. The same thing happens when you're looking for, when you're looking for a job and a recruiter wants to learn more about you or when someone wants to learn more about you as a professional. Their instinct is to Google you. So this is why it's so important that the first step of being a social selling professional or an expert is to go ahead and really create this professional brand and let that professional brand live with, within LinkedIn. And I can tell you guys this from experience. I do not have my own website. I've never had my own blog. I've invested the last seven years of my career and of my life in building my professional brand directly through LinkedIn. And um, moving on to the next slide, I can show you that when you leverage LinkedIn to go ahead and create long form posts, publish content, join groups, engage with others, what happens over time is your LinkedIn profile becomes your de facto website. Again, when someone Googles you, your LinkedIn profile is going to be what they're going to be gravitated to. It's not going to be your Facebook. It's not going to be your Twitter. Most likely, it's going to be your LinkedIn profile because that is where your professional presence online lives. Think of this as your online portfolio. So again, you're a sales professional. You want for prospects out there, when they come across your profile, what do you want them to see? And what's great is that when you're publishing content, over time, your profile becomes this hub in which whether it's first degree connections that you stay in touch with or whether it's perspective connections, i.e. buyers that come across you, what they're going to see is content that you're publishing to be a subject matter expert in your industry, in your career. And the value of publishing content directly through your profile as opposed to an external resource out there is that every time you publish content, your network is going to receive an update and they're going to be notified. So we've talked quite a bit about the value of establishing your professional brand, which is the first pillar of social selling success with LinkedIn. The second is leveraging LinkedIn to find the right people. And our tool that, that we offer is called LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It is a um, great product and, and premium subscription that you can utilize to go ahead and really get down to who you want to go ahead and do business with. You can go ahead and use this tool to run advanced searches for companies that you're targeting. You can use this to go ahead and build leads um, within Navigator. So anytime that there's company news, you can be updated. Anytime that certain prospects within your network go ahead and, and the publish content, you can be notified. And uh, most importantly, by leveraging LinkedIn to find the right people, you can view from first, second, and third degree networks, who in your network is connected to someone at the company that you want to do business with, which then can facilitate the warm introduction. Next slide, please. So we talked about finding the right people. Um, I think we can move on to the next pillar, which is engaging with insights. And engaging with insights is really important because, again, speaking as someone that's worked in brand marketing for several years now, one of the worst feelings in the world is when a sales professional reaches out to you and they know nothing about your company. They know nothing about the industry that you're in. Their, their email message to you, it's very similar to a cold call. They're reaching out. They're trying to hard sell you on the first message without building the relationship. So again, leveraging LinkedIn and leveraging Sales Navigator, you can really get to know the companies that you're wanting to do business with, and you can get to know your prospects well before you ever reach out to them, which this, in my opinion, is a very critical step before you send the in-mail message. Next, please. So build strong relationships. 
Again, aligning with the four pillars of social media or social selling success, you want to connect with contacts in your network and with prospects after you've been introduced. And I'll go ahead and give you an example. I have a lot of friends that work in sales, work at different companies. Either I've done business with them over the years or I've met them at conferences. And because we've formed this relationship, um, I'll give you guys an example. We don't have to go too far because I know Devin and I know the team at Insight Pool. If they were to reach out to me to make an introduction to someone in my network that I'm connected to, chances are I'm going to go ahead and make an introduction. And I'm not going to think about it twice. Why? Because we've formed a relationship with each other over years. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen on the first date, so to speak. It happened over a period of years. I was living in Jacksonville. I was working for a company in Jacksonville. Then I moved to St. Louis. And Insight Pool was with me each step of the way. Again, it goes back to relationships. People want to do business with who they feel comfortable doing business with. And the power of a relationship within social selling can really help you make or break a deal. Because again, when someone who works in sales or a company like Insight Pool reaches out to me because they want a warm introduction for someone in my network, I'm going to do it. I'm, going to think, I'm not even going to think about it twice. So that's again why you really want to focus on leveraging social media and the whole social selling process, uh, not only to build your professional brand, but use these tools to build relationships as well. I think we can move on to, to the next slide since uh, we talked about insights quite a bit. So one last stat for you guys before we get into some what I like to call hashtag real talk. So why is sharing important? for you as a sales professional or as really anyone that's looking to go ahead and leverage social media and the social selling process. So sales reps that see quota, they engage with prospects 39% more when they actually share content related to their prospects. And I'll give you guys an example. When I had my own startup, Jobs Direct USA, and I was trying to earn the business of a um, enterprise company because I was trying to sell them HR and staffing services, I would go ahead and leverage LinkedIn to go ahead and learn as much as I could about my prospects, but then also share information about their company across the other social networks. And what I would also do is I would reach out to prospects I was targeting. I would reach out to them through LinkedIn and actually have dialogue with them around company news and updates. I would say things to them like, for example, Ryan Miller, who worked at, who still works at Winn-Dixie and was a client of mine before I went to go work with Ryan, I would send him an email message and say things to him such as, hey, Ryan, I just saw in the news that Winn-Dixie is getting ready to staff up, or I just saw that Winn-Dixie had a great quarter. Congratulations on the success. Let me know how I might be able to help you out in any way. Again, it's a way of staying relevant, staying in front of a prospect, but it's also sharing their content, letting them know that you care, which goes a really long way. And then 98% engagements received. So sales reps that exceed quota have their updates engaged 98% more. Next slide, please. So again, this is what I like to call real talk. Prospects don't want to be sold to. Instead, they want to be engaged. And this is coming to you from someone who's been on both sides of the equation. I've had my own startup. I've had a hustle. I've had a grind using LinkedIn, using social media to go ahead and prospect and sell. And I can tell you, selling and closing deals, it doesn't happen on the first date. It doesn't happen just because you connect with someone. It doesn't happen on the first email message. It takes time. And you have to go ahead and engage your buyers. You have to go ahead and really build a dialogue with them and show value to them. And most sales pitches are ignored because of one simple yet crucial detail, which is the pitch. And in front of you, I'm not going to read these line by line, but in front of you, what you have is two examples. These two examples happened recently before I came to work for LinkedIn. And to put it into context, I was out of work for two months in between my last job and in between me coming to work for LinkedIn. And during that time, on my LinkedIn profile, I had indicated I was no longer working at my previous employer, yet I still had sales professionals that were reaching out to me through LinkedIn, pitching me their product, pitching me their business, wanting to get 15 minutes of time on the phone with me without really taking the time to see that I was no longer working at that company. 
Uh, so again, it's very important that you do your due diligence, you read through profiles, you really focus on building the relationship before you ask to get someone's time because while 15 minutes of time might, might not sound a, like a lot to you, it's a lot of time to someone who's in meetings back to back throughout the day. So when you do pitch to someone, if you are going to go down that route, ensure that you've done your due diligence, you subscribe to their email newsletter, you're visiting their website, you're getting to understand the tools that they use, you're, you're really vetting through and seeing what their social presence looks like before you ever reach out to them. Because I can tell you that can make a world of difference between getting that 15 minutes of time or in this case, your message being completely deleted and ignored. So what do you want to be known for? We talked about professional branding. We talked about the importance and the value of leveraging LinkedIn and social media in the whole social selling process to build relationships, to, do, to gain insights, and to engage. But as a professional, what do you want to be known for? And the next slide really sums it up. There is a great philosopher by the name of Vanilla Ice who in one of his songs had one of the greatest quotes tied to social selling that I've ever heard. And this was before social selling and before social media ever existed. And that's stop, collaborate, and listen. And what can you as a professional, whether you are in sales or whether you're in marketing, what can you learn from this quote? The first thing is you need to stop. You need to stop what you're doing and take a step back and really assess who are you trying to reach? Who are you trying to do business with? The next is collaborate. When you're approaching prospects, don't approach them to sell them something. Approach them because you really want to make a difference in their bottom line and you want to collaborate with them. You want to connect a potential need that they have with a solution that you can offer. And the last point is listen. This is one of the most critical steps that not only sales professionals but marketers Speaking as one, I will say this. This is one step that marketers and sales professionals miss out on on the daily on social media, and that's listening. What these tools today give us the ability to do is listen to what people are saying. If you take the time and listen to what prospects are saying out there in the social media ecosystem and then reach out to them based on, on, on their dialogue, based on what they're saying, or when you get them on the phone, instead of you going into your pitch, and I hear this constantly from sales reps, that they get a customer on the phone and they speak for 30 minutes, and then at the very end they ask the customer what they think without ever listening to them, without ever asking questions, you're going to set yourself up for failure. So my advice to all of you out there is do more of the listening, and then based on what you hear, then you come forward with what the solution to your prospective customer's need is. So I'm going to leave you guys on this last slide before we open it up to Q&A and I turn it back over to Devin. The key to social selling is being social versus simply being on social media. And let me expand on this for a second. Being on social media does nothing for your brand or nothing for you if you're not actually engaging. Simply having a presence, simply having a profile on LinkedIn, simply being on Twitter, on Facebook, if you only have a presence but you never engage, you never actually reach out and connect with people and add value, you're wasting your time and you might as well be cold calling at that point. So I, I want to leave you guys on that. The key to social selling is being social. If there's any way that I can help any one of you guys out, feel free to connect with me. Uh, you can obviously find me on LinkedIn. Um, let me know how I can help you guys out and, and be a resource. And um, with that, I want to turn it over uh, back over to Devin and Insight Pool. Cool, Carl. That was really helpful. Um, you guys are swimming in a bunch of data that um, it's great to be able to get it out there in the world to know, because some of the research that you know you showed us from IDC and I, I don't know that everybody knows all those things. So what's really interesting is that you know it is true. The world has already changed. Um, it is not coming, it's here. The entire world of connecting with people generally is completely different. It's almost like how often do you ever pick up your cell phone if you don't recognize the number? Never. And frankly, it's almost like how often do you pick up your office phone? I can tell you like at, at Insight, we don't even have office phones now. Uh, it's all Slack. Uh, it's all 
it's all Slack or it's texting or it's anything that's traditional, like Coke. Coke, a huge company and a very conservative company, just shut off all of their voicemail. Like you cannot call anybody and leave a voicemail at Coca-Cola anymore. So when you think about it, it's like, well, how, how fast is the world trying to adapt and change to this? And so that's the, <clears throat> we're one you know, of a, of a leading company sitting here doing this, but even in, in ourselves, we recognize that every day we're having to do things differently. And this is, you know, just some examples. What we do is, I think, the, I didn't even know the vanilla ice thing was, was there, but I, I actually like that a lot. And at Inside Pool, we use our own software to, again, like really stop, try and understand what's going on, figure out who we should be collaborating uh, with. And we, we have something called graph technology, which basically just simply means who are you connected to? It's, uh, it's kind of like connect with the connected. And the reality is, is that once you are able to start doing that and then sending up trackers, uh, you can start having discussions. Um, and yes, it's absolutely true that if you're not doing that, um, very quickly, this is going to be one of the only mediums that people respond to at all. Um, I, I think like the coming revolution is, again, it's not coming, it's already here. So I know that there's lots of questions on, you know, a sales navigator and then inside pool, and we actually are big customers uh, of sales navigator and use that a lot. Um, but we'll also be diving in, you know, next week into the actual detail of, you know, how the social selling platforms works. And then, uh, you know, there's tons of resources, obviously, on sales navigator too. So I think before we go to Q and A, we're going to do uh, a, a poll, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, light that off. And we've already got. Uh, several questions in queue, and I think uh, you know a couple of them you know surround like well the social media networks change stuff all the time um, you know and one of them recently was Twitter that they just broadened their new DM parameters and said hey you know now it used to be you could only DM somebody that was following you so in a uh, process to get uh, more engagement and more activity. Uh, Twitter said, hey look, if you choose to, you can go ahead and open up your account in order to be DM'd by anybody. So, you know, if you decide to opt in, you can. And eventually, um, what does that actually look like? How should brands go about this? Well, I think like, you know, I'll maybe speak on, on the Twitter one and then uh, and Carlos can probably liken it even to, uh, to in-mails. But the reality is, is that just because that feature is now available, I think it's a step towards building real relevant contextual relationships with people that can be your customers or advocates or influencers. And the DM feature is obviously, it's a great way to have a private discussion. But just like Carlos showed you, you know, in his slide when you're getting those cold LinkedIn emails, if somebody uses the DM feature to be like, you know, uh, hey, Devin, uh, would really like to uh, have you look at my software and uh, you can, you can um, be just amazed at how much people will try and cram into 140 characters. Um, but the reality is like, I want you to look at my software. Can you, uh, you know, give me a call back? Like, no, I'm just going to ignore that. Just like Carlos talked about ignoring emails. I think the trick is, is now that that feature is available is saying, hey, if this person was sitting right across from me, what would I say and what would I do? And if you approach it that way, I think it's a very, very, very powerful feature. But it's all context and it's all content. It has nothing to do with the availability of technology. It has to do with what you're actually going to do with it. So maybe, Carlos, do you want to you know, give us your take and your opinion on that new DM feature? You know, I've, I've been approached um, via DM by sales professionals over the years, and you know, here, here's what I don't like. When someone follows you and then asks you to follow them back, and then they, immediately they lead in with a DM. I think it's okay to use DMs, in mails, what have you, for selling purposes. But you have to build some context behind it. And it can be as simple as saying, you know, hey, I, I see the great work that you guys are doing. I'm going to just throw a company out there, Coke, since they're in your backyard. I see the great job that you're doing at Coke. You know, would just love to have 
15 minutes of your time to learn more about your business. Like, that's it. You know, here's what I've even said to our sales reps here on, on our end. Um, brand marketers and people in general, from what I've learned over the years, they love to talk about themselves. And if you get someone to talk about themselves, I can assure you that within that 15 minute conversation, you're going to be able to uncover a need that they probably didn't even know that they had, that your product or your service or your tool could potentially offer them. But what you don't want to do is inundate someone with literally what you would send in an email, you break out over five or six DMs, or you, or you put it in an in-mail message. And I wrote an article on LinkedIn last week around uh, tips for social uh, selling success. And I've actually had a lot of sales professionals that have reached out to me since then. They've asked specifically, not only with in-mail, but with DMs also, like, what would you say? And, I, you know, my advice to sales professionals is always keep it as short and concise as possible. For one, if someone connects with you on LinkedIn, thank them. Like, follow up and say thank you. Thank them for their time. Thank them for the connection. Or if you haven't connected but you want to, I would go ahead and send them a message and let them know that they are someone that you want to connect with because you might have some mutual connections or you've been following their business. Again, like, that's how you start the relationship. Like, you have to start at that ground zero. And you know, I think you guys at Insight Pool are, are the best example that I really can think of. And I'm not saying just because I'm on the phone with you guys, but, you know, we go way back, you know, to, to three companies ago from where I worked. And how did our relationship start? It was just very natural, very organic. It was just we're in the same space. I work in social media for a brand. You work for a tech company. How, you know, if, if you need something, we're here. And if you want to know more about what we do, this is what we happen to do. But it's never been a, you know, you're on this list and we're going to keep trying to go ahead and call on you and sell to you until you finally give in. So, again, you got to be human. you got to be personable. And, and that puts – that's really what it goes back to, right? It's using social media to be sociable. And if you're not, then you're just going to be, you know, blocked out and blacklisted. No one's going to want to engage. And that's, you know, that's just the truth of the matter. Yeah, that makes that's kind of really cool because it talks um, a little bit about what our one of our poll question was. It said, you know, what is your biggest hurdle for social selling? And forty uh, percent of them said education. Forty percent said time. So how do you dedicate time? And then twenty percent said, uh, you know, getting uh, my boss to buy into it. And it's really interesting because. Um, you know, I just think we still live in this world where social is domiciled because there's a lack of understanding. But we just talked about statistics that just said, hey, um, all of this activity is happening. Deals close faster. They're five times more likely to engage. I mean, 93 – I mean, all these different statistics showcase that it's like, are you kidding? You have to actually get your boss uh, to buy into this? And the reality is I think like – you know, there's some things that it's just, you know, generational gap. And I think in the workplace now, we have probably three different generations uh, at play. And there's this friction and rub between, you know, just getting data and then blasting people and then playing the law of averages um, to, again, spending time on things that maybe your boss or your boss's boss doesn't understand because they can't relate to it. So, you know, it probably goes along with this next quote, I mean, you know, the next poll finding that we had, it says, do you use social selling today? It's almost 100% said no, that they're not, but they plan to in 2015. So I just think that that's, you know, an incredible statistic. Um, and I think the reality of ways to, to show proof is to really say, well, this is already happening. It's not coming. It's here. And if we don't move fast, we're going to get left behind. And there's yeah, another question. Sorry, go ahead, yeah, I just want to interject. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you know, I, here, here's what I say to folks, because again, social selling is, is very loosely defined based on who you ask. Let's take the word selling out of it, and let's just call it relationship building, right? Let's, let's not talk about sales. Let's not talk about marketing anymore. Let's talk about leveraging social media to build relationships. If you build relationships over time, you're going to uncover needs, and when that happens is when you sell. And a lot of sales professionals, I think they feel the grind of they have to meet quota, they have to constantly keep their pipeline full, and again, it doesn't happen overnight. Success does not come overnight. It takes time, but you've got to start somewhere, and if you focus on building 
two things. One, your professional brand, and then two, relationships and add value to those relationships. You're never going to be out of business. You're never going to have an issue with meeting quota or, or keeping your pipeline full. But again, you know, I think it goes back to that, that critical element, which is taking the word sales as social selling and just focus on relationship building. Totally. Well, Carlos, this is a question uh, directly for you. It's, uh, the audience is asking, are certain products or services uh, better suited for selling socially via LinkedIn? So, for example, is a financial company's message more relevant to an audience than, you know, a snack food company, right? Like, how, how do you look at that and, you know, do each of the networks have their own place or do they coalesce together? So I, I believe I covered it earlier in, uh, in, in my slides. It's really understanding your audience and finding the right people. So in terms of decision makers, regardless of what industry or vertical they're in, you have decision makers, but identifying who the right one is, that's where it gets very tricky. So let me go ahead and break this down for you guys for a second. Oftentimes, you think of a decision maker as a C-level executive or as a, as a VP. But underneath those VPs and C-levels, you have many different layers which these are the folks that while they're not going to go ahead and sign the contract, they're very much influential in their organization. And I'll just use myself for an example. When I pre before coming to, to uh, LinkedIn, I was uh, head of digital at Save-A-Lot. And I brought tech vendors on board. And while I still had to go ahead and sell my vision up the line to a VP of marketing, um, ultimately the VP of marketing was taking my recommendation and my word for it, so to speak. But a lot of sales professionals would be inclined to go directly to that VP of marketing that then was handing them off to me. And by the time that handoff was taking place, I didn't even want to speak to the person. I felt that you went directly to my boss to go ahead and sell your product when my boss in the day is really concerned with the bottom line, which is dollars and cents ROI for moving the business, when my role that I've been tasked with is really owning digital marketing. So with that being said, it's really identifying the right people. And I would almost encourage sales professionals Start with the mid-level. You know, start with the mid-level managers. Get them on board with what you had to offer because at the end of the day, they're the ones that most likely are going to be using your product, not the VP, not the C-level. And then at that point, once you've gotten them on board, you have an internal advocate that's going to do the selling for you internally. Again, it goes back to building the relationships. Yep. I think you're absolutely right. <clears throat> and, um, you know, again, social is just an extension of, human connectivity, uh, just simply done digitally. Uh, the next question um, we've got from the audience is, you know, uh, that I talked about scaling social selling, um, but how do you do that? So, you know, all, all, these, all this data is out there, all this, um, you know, ability to engage and connect is at anybody's fingertips, but how do you actually scale that? Um, you know, as opposed to, yeah, dumping a bunch of names into a list and hitting send, and it doesn't take that much time, um, and it comes back. Well, I think like the reality is, is when you look at scale, the impact uh, that it has is is pretty incredible. So, say for example, let's just take even the webinar that we're doing today. Um, we can we can see who's engaging with the content. We can also see who's sharing the content. And in, in social, you can also see who those people are connected to that took that action. And and the reality is, is then when when you're actually engaging with people and, and giving them something relevant and then it, you can legitimately see like hey these people are also connected to these 10 others um, well just right there uh, the the ability for somebody to engage from a referral versus cold and I, I don't care what statistic it says out there it could be you know five times I think it's like a hundred times I think it's just massively massively different than if you were to literally just send you know a thousand cold messages because eventually you're going to run out of people to cold hit up like it's that 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 runway is going to stop and so the the trick is from when you talk about scale is legitimately understanding that it's three people that you're talking to might be connected to 200 that you need to talk to and when you take that approach and when you do things succinctly with that in mind scale is not the issue it's more of context and content and so forth so, Carlos, did you have anything to, to add around that when people ask you, how do I scale this? 
You know, it's, uh, I, I have a saying, a personal saying, which is leave no stone unturned. And you have to talk to people in order to meet people. And today, you, you know, you've heard the, the old cliche, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I, I'll take it a step further. It's who knows you. And I say that because kind of bringing this full circle to where I found myself in that Uber ride with a recruiter from LinkedIn, which ultimately paved the way for me to come work here. When I was out of a job, I was applying for jobs every single day. I was talking to people every single day. I was working my network. But it took that one chance meeting with the right person at the right time that made the stars align together and ultimately helped me land my role here at LinkedIn. So putting that into context for sales professionals, leave no stone unturned. Talk to people. Even if it's not someone that you think that you're going to do business with, they might know people that do. And I say that because I go to a lot of conferences. And I see this happen at conferences all the time. And, and trust me, social and in person, they're, they're no different. Same way you build relationships online, you build relationships offline. And I'll go to a conference and I will see someone that works the room. They're going around, they're shaking hands, buying drinks, making people feel great. Those are the social butterflies which they know that out of, out of the people that they're talking to, there's going to be some influencers in there. They're going to help them perhaps, you know, crack the code or open up doors, okay, for business. But then you've got your people that just sit back and they don't engage. And those are the ones that miss the, miss the boat. They miss the opportunity. So for those out there that work in sales, what I'm trying to say is don't miss your opportunity, Okay, there are people out there on social media that want to help you. The, the best thing that you could possibly do is join groups on LinkedIn. Engage in discussion in those groups. Um, or if you're on other social networks, if you're on Twitter, join you know, different Twitter chats. Get involved with like-minded people that once you add value to those inner circles, people are going to feel compelled to reach out to you and to help you um, through whatever way it might be. Yeah, well, that, that makes a lot of sense, and I know we're coming up on time here, so we'll do one last question uh, from the audience, and I think it's a relevant one, saying, is social selling just for salespeople? And, um, well, I mean, you know, the reality is is that that's, you know, like we've talked about, like take the word out. Um, and, and, and also, let's, let's get rid of negative connotations associated with selling. Um, I mean, in reality, like, uh, Carlos's job is probably not a salesperson. Um, and how he got it was through, you know, connectivity and, and authenticity and patterns. And, and actually, I don't know if, if any of his jobs were ever necessarily directly a salesperson, uh, other than maybe when he had his own company. But all of us are in some level of sales. So if we stop and say, hey, let's just take any negative connotation out of that, we're all selling. And my reality is, is that I see recruiters do this, that um, want to connect with other people that can – connect them to potential candidates. Um, I see, you know, people that have, like, are the furthest possible uh, aspect from selling uh, do the same thing, that they're engaging in content, they're building up their personal brand, uh, and there's nobody that's ever said, I've never heard of anyone say, uh, a reputation doesn't matter. And now your reputation lives completely digitally. Um, I think, you know, Carlos mentioned LinkedIn might pull up you know, in, in your first couple headlines when you get Google, I mean, the reality is, is that it's not just LinkedIn, it everything pulls up. So even Twitter recently, you know, started saying they're going to index tweets now again with, uh, with Google. So all the conversations you have uh, openly there are going to get indexed and pull up. So when people decide to research who you are, um, you know, it's amazing how many people become thought leaders because they simply do what others are ta only talking about. So the reality is, is, like, does reputation matter? I've never heard of anybody say in any professional setting at all. I've, I've only heard people say reputation matters the absolute utmost. I think it's Warren Buffett that said it takes you 20 years to build a reputation and 20 minutes to lose it. And so I think that, uh, you know, social is simply your digital persona and your personal brand. And it needs to be paid attention to the same exact way you probably used to hold your resume. And that is the new world that we live in. So, Carlos, with that, I uh, don't know if you want to take that question, and then we'll go ahead and end it for today. So uh, was, can you repeat the question again? Was it, does your reputation matter? No, it does. Is social selling only for salespeople? 
Oh, oh, got it. Um, no, not at all. Uh, I think that applies across the board if you're in marketing, um, even if you don't work in sales. Uh, to piggyback on what you said, ultimately, whatever we do at an organization, our end game is one thing and one thing only, and that's to drive revenue. Um, that's why companies are in business today. And regardless of where you sit in the organizational structure, your job is to go ahead and help the company be as successful and as profitable as it possibly can be. And, you know, to your point, I really learned about social selling or I, was, I acquired the traits of social selling when I had my own business during the recession from 08 to, to 2012. And even though I've worked in brand marketing and I've had my own business, I've never considered myself a social salesperson. It's just instinctively I've leveraged LinkedIn to build that brand, but I've also leveraged social media holistically to go ahead and engage. And um, I, I think when you start taking the word, again, like I said before, take the word sales as social selling and focus on leveraging social media to build relationships and build your professional brand, you'll start seeing much more success. You'll start seeing doors open up for you. So again, short answer, no. Social selling is not just for sales professionals. It can really be used holistically uh, across the board. Cool. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining today. And a big shout out to, to my friend Carlos as well. This was super helpful. And um, I think there was a couple questions about is there a link that's going to be sent out afterwards? Absolutely. We'll be sending that in a, in a follow-up note and uh, along with the recording. And um, if you are interested in, inside of the chat window, there's also the link to the webinar next week where we'll dive deep into the actual software and apparatuses of social selling. And so, again, thank you so much, Carlos. Really appreciate you taking the time today. And, uh, you know, you've got some uh, big fans here on the East Coast. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.